I guess that's one way to end the series. I, it seems like the writer wanted to do some kind of mishmash of like Jean arc and the biblical arc to make like Jean of the actual biblical arc. I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm very mixed on the ending. I'm happy about the ending just because it's an ending that has, you know, pretty much everybody happy in the end, minus O'Malley. <laughs> Sorry to O'Malley fans out there. I know she could still be out there. But it is sad that pretty much every single one of my predictions did not go through with this episode. Like, literally, only one prediction went through, and that was that at least some O'Malley crew did make it. But, like, everything else was failed. Like, I... My prediction that they would leave the money behind, though they actually took the time as the cave was crumbling to actually get a whole bunch of money. <laughs> They're like, we got to get out of here. And I guess they went to the boat, then came back and got some more stuff and went back to the boat. And then went back and got some more stuff and went back to the boat. But no, they have to get out of here because the cave is collapsing. <laughs> um, K, they didn't have a fight with K. They just, they just, K shows up and they give him the knife. Like, wow, that was all that fear, all that build up for how terrifying K is and how they're breaking the rules that they've had set forth, just, 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 <laughs> just going to go over there. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm i making too much fun. It was, a, like I said, it was a fine episode. Just nothing really, everything they built up, I just kind of just, let's just get rid of this. I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a really a lot to do with, I almost wish they didn't do this whole arc thing. And just focused more on the characters. Like I said in the very beginning, I was like, I'm, I'm hoping this will just be a Rage of Bahamut. A goofy, silly, let's have fun, great characters, chemistry's good and solid, let's just have fun, great animation. But instead, I think for the last, I don't know, five or so episodes, the focus kind of shift to let's focus on this prophecy. Let's focus on Fina Houtman and the the prophecy of her birth and the la passele kind of thing let's let's focus on that i hope i didn't butcher that and that sounded terrible but i think that that focus that i think it was the moment that abel captured fina i think the it still has this incredible production but the story and the chemistry kind of just went Meh. it is kind of when we're done with that i don't know it is it is a little bit it's just disappointing I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. But I I think that was really where it kind of went downhill was about that point. But yeah, getting into the episode, obviously they ended up talking with this uh, Cody who ends up being technically part of Eden as we find out that both Cody and uh, Franz were both apparently a part of Eden. And their whole role in our world was to lead Fina through this journey. And apparently she was supposed to do a lot of choices that proved that she was worth being the maiden of choosing. I don't remember at what point during the story she made some really critical decisions, but they're putting a lot of emphasis on she was tested. And again, this is where it's like, did we decide this after the fact, or was it supposed to be 24 episodes? Because we didn't really put Fina through much stuff. And that equally was true as we find out what the maiden of choosing is, and that's that the maiden of choosing is supposed to choose between destruction and creation or continuation. It almost sounded at first that they were saying that it was either destruction, creation, or continuation. But when they presented the choices to her, they only showed that there was a destruction and a rebirth and a continuation. And the continuation was shown to her by showing her, here is your friends, the mercenaries, a possible future where they're all going to die on this battlefield. This is If you do choose continuation, this is probably what's going to happen. And then they go, okay, now let's show you what... The creation rebirth thing is, which is where, yeah, <laughs> Jean d'Arc gets on a actual arc and the entire world is flooded and she is there along with Yukimaru. So you can restart everything and it'll just be two pure souls and all the animals of the world are, I guess, chosen by random for pure souls and you will repopulate the world, basically. Like I said, pretty much a biblical arc and... Again, it, it seemed like that was the only two they made. But it, like I said, it, at first they presented it as destruction, comma, creation, comma, or continuation. Not destruction and creation, comma, continuation. But either way, I'm going to say that she has two choices. And that was what was kind of another thing where it felt like either, again, this was supposed to be 24 episodes. 
or it was just too rushed because what at this point is presented to Fina is that, hey, Fina, you're the maiden of choosing. You can choose to destroy the world and restart it, or you can choose to continue as it is. And I feel like if Fina was put through more tragic stuff, it would make sense. It was almost like they forced her to see what happened to her mother just to force this conundrum upon her. And even still, when they showed her being burnt, they could have added more emotion to it by showing the people cheering it on because the whole idea is to show, look how terrible this world is. Your mother was burned alive. Well, show the people laughing. Show that the society around her is literally seen as, as entertainment. That would be a better way to show her how terrible the world is because that's, her, that's the maiden of choosing's choice. It's because this world is so populated and it's so bloated that they want on a regular basis for a maiden of choosing to choose if this should continue or not or if it should be reset. Implying that, I, I don't know, I also assume this is implying that the original biblical uh, uh, the ark, uh, Noah's flood, was a concept of a maiden of choosing, choosing to reset things. I'm assuming that's what they're implying here. And that essentially all the other maidens beyond that point, which again, we can assume is Jean of Arc and stuff, chose to continue chose that they wanted life to move on so it's this kind of yes here's where it went wrong but here's all these points in which life was allowed to continue because despite them being possibly burnt at the stake or whatever they chose to continue life but again fina hasn't really gone through anything critical here so far so it's like sh there's no conundrum here do i want all my friends to die and i live happily with yukimaru or do we all just live happily together and continue on and, yes, have to face difficulties? It doesn't seem like much of a choice. <laughs> I, I think I've seen somebody tweet like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is a choice? <laughs> like, this is difficult for her? She's like saying, I, I, this, is, this, is, this is too quick. This is too soon. I, I can't make this decision. This is impossible. It's like, no, it isn't. You either choose to kill everybody or you choose to live on live on <laughs> that's not the heart of a choice i don't know maybe if it was presented differently to her in the idea that you know they do they do kind of hit the idea that eventually there will be destruction like eventually there's current peace there's current allies there's current people are competing our nations are competing but things are still going okay right now yes they can eventually get get bad but it's it's going right now but again in her eyes in her perspective where she's at it's basically a decision between killing all of her friends, her mercenary friends, the, the goblin knights, or not. And I don't see that being too difficult of a decision, a decision for her. But yeah, the other thing that comes into play is that the moment she makes her decision, she will lose all of her memories. She's going to become a blank slate because they don't want her to have that feeling like she destroyed everything or she didn't destroy everything to bog down her mind and basically drive her mad. So she makes a decision. Everything's crumbling. The whole Eden is going back down. And Yuki Maru finally sees her again, and she's like, you know, look, sorry, I gotta go. I'm not gonna be able to see you. I can't leave with you because I'm gonna forget everything, and he's just not liking that, obviously. And eventually, they wake up, and they're on his island together, and Fina has brown hair, dark hair. That was interesting. She looks really good with that hair, by the way. That looked, that looked really good. But yeah, of course, she says, who are you, and who am I? And he's like, I'm Yuki Maru, you're Fina. I'm going to stay at your side. I will protect you. We're going to go together. And they're basically kind of traveling the world. Yeah, we also seen that the, <laughs> the crew, pretty much the Goblin Knights, all kind of accumulated a whole bunch of the treasures. And yeah, they're just traveling the world, basically retracing their steps that they took with Fina to kind of see if they can re-spark some memory of her. At some point, she has, there's like a blonde-haired girl and boy that run past her. And I'm guessing they're insinuating that's maybe a rebirth of Abel and Helena. And so that kind of triggers a little bit of a memory within her. But some voice says, what are you trying to uh, look for scraps of memories? I'm not sure exactly who was that voice. It might have been Franz. And yeah, the episode ends with Yukimaru and Fina at the head of the boat. And he's basically saying, you know, don't, don't force yourself. Just let it come back. The memories come back as it wishes. I will always be at your side. I love you. And then his little <laughs> his ear blushing happening. Is anybody out there actually blushing their ears? I, I really do want to know if that's a thing because I've seen actually quite a few anime that have blushing ears. But yeah, and when he says this, Fina says, I've been waiting ages for him to say that. And she bonks him on the head. And so it kind of implies the end that she 
remembered everything? I don't know. It just like, out of nowhere, I'm waiting ages. Boom. She has her memories, I guess. So very weird ending. But yeah, I'd, like I said before, it, technically my prediction that O'Malley's crew was still alive is technically true. We get to, we got to see Hana, Mary, and one other girl, and it didn't see O'Malley. So I'm guessing that that's the only three survivors. It's what they're insinuating. Uh, yeah, they they made a trip to go see Kay, and they gave him the weapon, which is the treasure from Japan that they were looking for. Again. No conflict, so I guess Kay was like, what's up, guys? He's like, here's a sword. Cool, later. <laughs> Have fun with Finn, I guess. And he went his separate ways, I guess. Like I said, they kind of implied that Kay wasn't a bad person, so it doesn't shock me too much that he would be willing to be like, okay, you got the sword. I, I guess there could be an insinuation you guys broke the rules. But again, Kay and Yukihisa, unless they were told by Shatan, wouldn't know. It's just they took a detour and they found the sword. What's bad about that? We never seen Meg Xavier again. That's the other sad thing I forgot about. Meg Xavier was the guy at the very beginning that was buying Fina that had uh, Kendra Suda's voice. I never brought him back. That that was kind of a shocker. I never seen Kendra Suda only exist in like two episodes lately anyways. But yeah, it was also important to note that at some point they mentioned that Fina has to continue the bloodline. And that was partly to do with the memory wiping is that they wanted Fina to continue on, to continue to procreate and to essentially allow for the next generation of the maiden of choosing to happen, which implies that eventually it will happen again and somebody will, some other daughter, granddaughter, great, 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 great granddaughter will have to decide the fate of the world. I'm kind of mixed on it. I'm very mixed on the episode. I, I think it was a fine episode. I think it was at the same time lackluster because of the fact that Fina hasn't really gone through much, nor has made many decisions, nor seen very terrible things to imply that she would have a tough decision and she's perfectly fine where she's at right now. There's no conundrum there that she has to face. It's just a, hey, here's a mechanic of this world. Do you want to use it? <laughs> that, that's really what it is. It's like, here, your journey to get here. And oh, yeah, by the way, there's this mechanic of this world. Do you want to use it? No? Okay, cool. Later. Um, and that's pretty much it. Wipe memory. Have fun regaining it. It's just it didn't really have that build up that I, I think it necessarily needed. I'm, like I said, I'm happy to see that everybody's happy in the end. We didn't lose any of the crew. Uh, even o O'Malley's crew is back, despite O'Malley not being back, question mark. <laughs> but I don't know, we might get a second season where O'Malley gets revenge. We'll see, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious if this would get a second season. I don't necessarily see that it can't. I, I would I would like a second season just because, like I said, beyond the point in which Abel captures Fina, it kind of just goes meh. It, it loses a lot of its flavor because a lot of the flavor was in Fina being a goofball, them going out and doing adventures. It wasn't about... Eden, 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 I'll make decision by. The joy is in the chemistry. The joy is in the adventures they went on. And I think if they can make just an entire season of just, they have money now, they're just going to go run around and have fun, that would be cool. You know, go travel over to Japan and go visit that place and see the wonders of Japan in this particular world. That would be a lot more fun. I think that could be what would be in a second season. Maybe O'Malley coming after them because they have that money. That kind of stuff would be a lot more fun. That's my thoughts on the finale of Fina Pirate Princess. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below, comment, let me know what you thought of the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. Support us on Patreon if you can. We definitely appreciate everybody that does. And also there's a tip button in the description where you can support us directly. And yeah, I appreciate everybody checking us out on a weekly basis to see my impressions on this. I'll have a review coming up later. Stick around. I'll be doing impressions on a weekly basis of other shows this particular season, the fall season. And I thank you all for watching, and y'all take care.